Okay, we have Sean Cowan here from London. Uh, you sing, you play guitar. Yep. I was reading the bio today about you, and coming up as a child, you seem to have been involved in a whole lot of different influences. Tell me a bit about it. Yeah, I uh, always enjoyed singing as a child, so naturally I joined orchestra and choir and um, anything musical that I could get involved with, I, I really uh, tried to go for. So you did orchestra. Now, what did you do in the orchestra? In the orchestra, I started off on cello, uh, but I moved to stand-up bass. Oh, okay. Now, do you still play bass at all, or no? Or No, I mostly just play guitar now and, and sing. And sing? Oh. So, your musical influences when you were younger. Let's pick teenage years, because you're really not that old as to start with. But <laughs> my, so, uh, Yeah, my teenage years, I listened to a lot of punk. Um, just a lot of, you know, no effects, rancid, stuff like that. Um, and then uh, later on in my uh, high school years, I got more involved in acoustic music. Okay. It's a little mellower, you know, style. Now, obviously you still have interest in punk music. I do a little bit every now and then, yeah. Okay. Because that's a genre that um, I'm not real familiar with. Um, in the city of London, where would you go if you want to see punk bands on a consistent basis, where would you go? Um, I haven't been involved in the punk scene so long, so I really wouldn't You know. really don't know? No. Uh, I'm playing most weekends as well, so I don't get a chance to go check out any other live music in the city too much. When you play uh, yourself, you're doing strictly solo acts? Or do you do duets with anybody every once in a while, or just strictly you? Yeah, I do uh, duos every once in a while, mostly solos. Uh, I just had a full band gig last weekend, um, which was pretty fun. I was at the London Music Club, uh, but it's mostly just solos. Play the big hall? Yes, we did. It's nice playing in there. Pete's got a nice setup in oh, there. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah. So who's in, who's in the band? Uh, that night I had on lead guitar, Paul Gagnon. Um, on drums I had Howard Strong, and on bass I had Simon Thorell. Okay, I know Howard Strong, not personally, but I know of him. Oh yeah. So, all original or...? No, it was actually all covers. We didn't do any original tunes. It was uh, just a, a cover gig. What kind of covers did you do? A lot of 80s, 90s, uh, new rock, a little bit of country, a cool. little bit of everything. Cool. You're taking over, um, you're playing at Whitecaps, is it, in the band? Yeah, Whitecaps. You're doing the jam there on Friday nights? Yep, every Friday night. We uh, get a good, good group of locals out that like to jam. And that's going to go on throughout the summer, or...? They're going to keep it going all the way till the summer. Um, then I'll probably be playing some duos there uh, with a percussionist or maybe a, a lead guitar player. Your influences now. If you were to go home tonight and you had time, because I know in the real estate world you're also really busy, yeah. <laughs> what would you sit down and listen to? Uh, I would listen to, well, I, I normally like listening to a lot of tunes that I grew up with, a lot of 90s stuff, um, but I do enjoy some new country these days, um, yeah, and some of the newer rock, I definitely enjoy some of the new rock, um, it's really interesting and I'm enjoying it. Your gear, what do you use on stage for gear? I've got a Bose L1 Compact that I've been using. All right. And uh, I've got the, t uh, the T1 Tone Match Mixer that goes with that. Are you a guitar collector? N not really. I've got a few. <laughs> a few? <laughs> and, I, and a few is how many? I've got three. Three? Yeah. So I've, I've got an old GK that, uh, yeah, that was my very first guitar that I was playing with because I could actually mic it. Um, then I got an Ovation uh, Balladeer. And then now I've most recently got uh, Takami. Wow. The Ovation, um, back in the 70s and 80s, Ovations used to be quite the name. Um, have they still kept? I think for that guitar, for sure, it's one of my favorite guitars that I've ever played. Really? Yeah. Sweet. Um, when you played at the London Music Club, when you guys did the band thing, did it, any special guests or did you just wing it on your own? or? No, we just did the whole thing. Did the whole thing on yourself? On our own, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, it went over pretty pretty good. It was a private birthday party, so I knew most of the guests. Cool. So the pressure was kind of a little bit lower. 
And it's it's a lot of fun too when you know everybody. Oh yeah. Yeah, that makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Everybody will get into it a lot more because they do know you. So there is that kind of broken ice that's already been shattered and you don't have to go through that familiarizing yourself with the audience kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so that would be a lot of fun. Um, so do you get out around town much to see any of the bands or you? I try to when I can. Um, like I said, though, I'm, I'm playing every Friday in Grand Bend and then most of my Saturdays are booked as well. I'm starting to get booked up with private parties and uh, a lot of the bars are looking to book their live music now too, so. Good for you, good for you. Future plans, future gigs coming up, future things that you want to do, um, whether it be gigs in town, gigs out of town, summer's coming up, Port Stanley, Grand Bend. Yeah, all of that. I wanna, yeah, I wanna get some gigs going here in town, um, keep doing the Grand Bend thing. That's a lot of fun in the summer. Um, I also want to look at maybe doing some recording this year. I've always had plans for that, but never gotten around to it. Uh, basically, just keep playing music whenever I can. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Oh, it's a great time. You know, there's just no feeling quite like it. No, and it's great how, you know, no matter what age you are, you can always get together with people and, and jam oh, you know, and yeah. find a common ground. Yeah. If you ever got any of the jams, and, and, and that's one thing you always notice is, I've seen 20 year olds go up with 60 year olds and it doesn't matter the skill sets. It doesn't matter um, if they reach the same ending of the song at the same time. Just, you just sit there and watch them and like, they're just having fun for that three or four minutes, three or four generations apart will connect as they get up there and play a song together. And it's really kind of cool to see. It's very neat, yeah. You know? Um, and you make so many great friends in this community. Oh, definitely. There's so many cool people. Um, a lot of the people I've met, um, you walk into a club and they walk up to you and they say hi, they know you by your first name. Um, you talk, and of course, there's always the Facebook and Twitter and everything else, of course, but um, it seems you, you meet one person and it's like dropping a rock in the pond, it ripples out. You meet more people, you meet more people, you meet more people. So it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I've definitely met a ton of people just through the music business, different bars, um, and, and especially the open jams. Those are the most fun. It's just, you know, an unpaid gig. Basically, you're going to an open jam, meet some people and have a great time. That's, you know, it's amazing to make that connection. You find the bar owners in the city really good to work with? Yeah, for the most part. I yeah. mean, obviously, there's the odd one here and there that, you know, they have their reputations for oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> not being so kind, but uh, for the most part, yeah, everybody's great to deal with. And you know what? I, I experienced something just recently where um, a patron in a club uh, totally destroyed part of the club. Oh, no. Yeah, so it's, it probably is going to cost the owner of the club like $1,000. And you know what? There's no need for it. Like, if you want to go and have fun, that's cool. And we all, God knows, now I look at a beer and I get a hangover. But, you know, like, we've all gone out and had a lot of fun and maybe too much fun. But the bar owners, they're still business and still trying to make money. And I even felt bad myself. And it, and it happened at one of our thing. It wasn't a friend of ours. It was out of town thing. Um, but you just kind of, like, you're shaking your head, like, why would you even do something like that? You know, so I feel bad for bar owners when they're thrown into a situation like that. But like most of the bar owners I've dealt with, I can't think of one who has been, huh, really? Uh, they've all been great people, you know, and they seem to treat musicians really, really well in the city um, or even the surrounding areas as far as Milton kind of thing. Um, the experience with them I've found, and I think a lot of people have found, um, it's been great and I think it's it's great for people your age coming up and I don't mean that in an insultive way oh, no problem but you still got a lot of years ahead of you of playing music for people oh I definitely hope so <laughs> you know and it and to be able to have a good rapport with the, the people who own these venues it serves to your purpose it makes it makes the whole experience for you a whole lot better oh definitely maintaining those relationships is so key to to making sure that I've got you know gigs at every weekend like I want your friends, what kind of music are they in? Do you hang around musician friends? Are they not musician friends? Yeah, well, I'm, you know, real estate uh, is my other job. And then, you know, doing the music thing, I don't have many friends these days. But, uh, 
I know that um, the people that I generally hang out with listen to dance music and, and some hip hop and, and things like that. So they don't generally listen to the same music I would. Okay, shameless plug time. What real estate company do you work for? Uh, Realty Executives. And uh, you want to make sure you ask for the rock and realtor. The rock and realtor? That's right. I'm very in tune with your real estate needs. So. Okay. How long have you been there? I've been there for just under three years now. So it's a and, great company. And the broker I've mentioned is? Uh, Costa Palopoulos and Mary Johnson. They're great brokers. They take care of all of us, make sure that we're comfortable. I know Costa and Mary quite well, and uh, they are, and Costa is one of the greatest gentlemen you'll ever meet in your life. Oh yeah, he's, he's, he's a super guy. But he, working for Costa, I would think, would be a huge amount of fun. Oh yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun for sure. And, uh, you know, just, they're very quality people. Yep. I, um, last year I didn't have as great a year as I would like to in the real estate. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this year, I, you know, I need to get a different plan together and, and figure out what I was going to do. Um, and Dan and Rachel Plakovich, they decided they were starting a team this year. And, you know, I, I, I believe Mary and Costa talked to them and, and uh, got me involved in the whole thing. So, you know, we're, we're really busy this year. We're uh, six of us now. Sweet. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a great year for us. So, I, you know, just that whole thing, I really appreciate everything that everybody's done over there at Realty Executives. And it helps you out a lot too when you're not just kind of doing the backstroke by yourself, but when you're part of something oh, a yeah. little bigger, there's that support system there that when you're kind of going, oh man. Definitely. Somebody picks you up and pushes you along. That's right. The, uh, the accountability. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rachel will laugh about that. The accountability coach. Oh. She, yeah. She's our, she's our in-house accountability coach. Oh, Okay. <laughs> No, uh, Mary and Costa, they're great people, but, uh, so you're in good hands there. Definitely. Sweet. So between that, real estate, and the music business, you really don't have much downtime then. Not a whole lot, no. Sweet. Yeah. So any other plans, any other aspirations you have? Um, maybe try and go on vacation a couple times this year. Not a real vacation, like two days here and there, maybe do some fishing, but, you know, more than I got to do last year. When you go away, if, if you have the opportunity to go away, do you go check out clubs? Or do you just say, you know what, I need a break, I'm getting away from it? Yeah, normally when I go away, I, uh, I go to a cabin, just out some lake, you know. Normally it's our family cabin, which is about nine hours away, and not very close to anything, so. Where is it? It's in Metatchewan. Um, it's about 45 minutes west of New Liskard. It's okay. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty far up there. Um, but we have a cabin on an island there, and... Um, a couple boats. Sweet. Yep. Very nice. Oh yeah. Solar sweet. powered? Uh, no, it's mostly propane powered. <laughs> but oh, we'll probably, no, but I think uh, we we have worked on some uh, heating for the water for the shower kind of thing. You know, solar powered um, stuff for that. And I think as time goes on, more and more, you know, we'll we'll become greener for sure. Well, that's a nice place to get away to. Oh, definitely. Except for the nine-hour drive, but... Yeah, but once you're there, it's totally worth it. Oh, that would be very, very nice. Yeah. Sweet. Um, okay, well, um, I want to thank you for coming in. I've really enjoyed having this time with you. I wish you all the best. Um, Barb and I have every intention of coming out and seeing you. It's just, at times, we're kind of swamped, too. No, I understand. But, uh... Uh, your dates are always on all stage, so we will for sure get out and see it. And I encourage everybody, go see the rock and realtor, Sean Cowan. Thanks, Lester.